Okay, so this video will discuss the um, website that's running on the Mac Mini here in the house and behind the login page is a bunch of different web applications and they all talk to each other and download content. I won't go into how to set up these things because I don't want to necessarily help the world build pirating systems like this. Um, instead, I just wanted to discuss more kind of the idea of how these things would work. So the reason I built this uh, or started this entire project many years ago was I, I was dealing with Amazon having some movies and Apple having some other movies or TV shows, um, different renting schemes and business models. Uh, I can't access my Amazon content on my iPhone, um, but I can on my Xbox. And there are all these, these issues of reaching the content I paid for and where to find it from and what devices it would play on. So I thought to myself, there's got to be a way to solve this problem, and wouldn't it be nice if the large uh, content, uh, the, the companies that generate the content, the Sonys and the MGM Studios, Warner Brothers, Comcast, DirecTV, um, if all of these guys installed a database system in their headquarters, um, and what it would do is, it, it's their distribution software. Now the key is they would have to follow an industry standard meaning they would all have to deliver content to people like you and me in the same method. Uh, so Comcast can't be sending material to, to me one way and, and DirecTV is sending it to me another way. They all need to be using the same um, industry standard method. Uh, so what this would mean is I could download a $10 piece of software and I could connect to Comcast and connect to DirecTV and to Sony and I could pay as I download stuff directly from them and the money would go directly to the people that made the content. Now, I know that that's simplifying the larger idea, but that's, that's, you know, that's the way I think it could and should go in the future. Now, it doesn't look like that's happening um, for obvious reasons. The, the big, the big uh, distribution companies out there want to keep their hold on it and even the telecom industry is getting mixed up in it. So it's just, it's kind of crazy. Um, so I built this thing called Clusterbox, right? And it, I call it Clusterbox because it's a mix of all these different pieces of software that come together to do close to what I described a moment ago. Um, so I don't want to encourage everyone to pirate, but this is something that I built because I just kind of had this vision and I just wanted to build it. So uh, I'm going to log in here, and this is a web page that's accessible from anywhere in the world. Um, some friends and family use it, um, and I won't disclose the URL on YouTube, but um, I want to walk you guys through it. So when I first uh, log in, uh, it knows who I account. Now, uh, this menu up here is something that I built. It's really quickly built. Uh, but all this stuff in here, I just want to be clear, is the Plex web client. Uh, so if you sign up for MyPlex, you can get access to this, and you can watch all your content in the browser. You could be in Brazil, and you could stream the video from your Mac Mini at home through the internet directly in the browser. So let's say I want to watch this Mythbusters episode. I say play. So my server is spinning up and it's transcoding the video. It's going all the way through the internet and coming and playing in the, in the browser. Very cool. Um, so now all of a sudden I have the ability to view my content anywhere in the world and on my iPhone and on my iPad and on my Google TV and on my TV at home and on the Xbox and Windows 8 and Plex has done a great job building clients for all these different um, uh, pieces of hardware that are out there. So awesome. Uh, and I made these little shortcuts here so you can watch TV or you can go directly to the music section or adjust the bit rate of the video um, so that if you're on a slower connection, it'll stream. Okay, so that's this menu right here. The second one is add new content. So these are Python-based web applications. They're open source. And what they do is they, all three of them, uh, will go and find content on these NZB indexing sites that I pay for. So Couch Potato downloads only movies. And I could go up here and say, I want to download Star Wars, which I think I already have. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I don't have that one. Or that one. Wow. Okay, no problem. So um, if I said add, uh, Couch Potato would go to all the NZB indexing sites and look at all the movies that are out there on Usenet, because I pay for a Usenet account. 
and it will evaluate what the best version, it'll find a bunch of different Star Wars movies, right? But it'll find the best one. And I told it to find down, to download 720p with DTS and make sure the audio is in English. Um, if it can't find that, it will look for a 1080p version, which is a bigger file. If it can't find that, it'll look for a DVD rip. And if it can't find that, it just keeps searching to the end of eternity. Um, so that's how Couch Potato works. Now when it finds it, it passes it to the downloader tool, which is called SAB NZBD. Um, so the movie would get passed in here, and the most recent movie is called With Nail and I. It was released in 1987. It's a 1080p movie. Um, it's 8.4 gigs. It downloaded in 21 minutes and 16 seconds, so pretty quick. Um, it unpacked, meaning it unzipped or it unrarred all the stuff inside of it and deleted all the crap files on the side uh, in 14 minutes. And then it ran this script. Um, so there's a guy named Clinton Hall on GitHub who's made um, all these, these scripts that run from SAB. So when SAB and CBD finishes downloading something, it runs the correct script. And what that script does is it moves the, the movie into the correct directory, and then it tells the original tool that found it, in this case Couch Potato, uh, it tells Couch Potato to update. So Couch Potato scans and it goes, oh yeah, cool, I found the 1080p movie. Um, and Couch Potato will rename the movie file correctly. It will download all the um, subtitles for me. And then it will move it into the Plex movie directory. And then it will tell Plex to update itself. So this workflow where you just search for what you want up here, it finds the best version, it passes it to the downloader. The downloader tells the tool that found it that it's done. Um, the tool that found it moves it into the Plex directory and then tells Plex to update and voila, uh, the content shows up on your iPad and your iPhone and everything. It's, it's great. Uh, find TV shows. Um, this is an application called Sickbeard. Um, it's an open source Python based web application. It does the same thing Couch Potato does but only for TV shows. Um, and then find music uh, is headphones and uh, NZ or Usenet is actually a bad place to find music. Um, I do use some torrent sites that I pay for to find some of the content, but to be honest, I, I pay for my Spotify account, so I don't use this too much. Um, but I've been experimenting with it lately just to kind of check it out. Um, and that's why I have uTorrent here. So there, there is a torrent client as well that I access through the web in this one place. So um, yeah, this is this is the, the 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 website that's running, and my family and friends access it, and it's great, and they can all log in to their Plex account, and they can enjoy the content as soon as it's done downloading. Um, and one of the things I like to point out is the TV shows Sickbeard is is smart. It knows when the next episode is coming out of a certain TV show, and it will wait for 7 p.m. on April 14th, 2014, to go and find that TV show because it just aired. Um, so it's like a DVR system as well. It's really very nifty. Um, yeah, so again, I, I won't discuss how to build it, but it's very cool to see that it is possible. And I think if some of these large companies would embrace an industry standard and a, uh, a method in which we could all reach into their databases and pull directly from them instead of having all these middlemen, we could have a really cool system like this that would replace television, essentially. Um, we would have IP-based TVs all the time, you know, no longer coax in these physical boxes. So we'll see where it goes in the future. Um, I hope you guys like the, the concept, and uh, thanks for watching.